Hi, everybody. My name is Siri. Yes, like the iPhone, but I'm not going to take any of your questions. I uh, have worked in tech. I ran an uh, incubator. It was number one in terms of throwing parties. Uh, it was called 111. Um, and I've worked in government and I've worked in, in, uh, in politics. Uh, I know that you guys are all thinking about your companies, about your products, about your customers. You're preoccupied with your own lives. But we all know that there are outside factors that can also impact our success. We can be impacted by banking regulations, say, or by the temperament of who owns Twitter, or by you know supply chain management, something none of us have probably heard about a couple years ago. Um, but we're doing something tonight because the way this city runs is going to affect you as well. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you live in this city. The way this city works will affect your lives, it will affect your families, and it will affect your companies. Whether you can afford to live here, whether you can hire people who can afford to live here, whether people want to come here, um, whether they can get around, whether they can feel safe, all of that is decided and influenced by the people who run this city. We are about to have a mayoral election in this city. It's going to be, somebody help me out, in June. June 26th. Got it. Um, in June 26th. It's our second one. There was a bit of a situation, so we're having another one. Um, but this is important, and we're going to introduce you to some of the candidates who are running tonight. It's a chance for you to get to know them a little bit, to know their names, to Google them, to get involved, to reach out and ask questions, and think about what kind of city you want to live in. This is an important decision. We are essentially hiring the CEO of one of Canada's biggest corporations. The city of Toronto has a $16 billion annual operating budget. They cannot run a deficit. They have to balance their books every year. They have a unionized workforce of more than 40,000 people. They have partners in the federal and provincial governments who you have to deal with. They have a very, very hard cap table. Um, it's a hard job and we need amazing people to do it. So we're gonna introduce you tonight to some of the people who are raising their hand for that job. And I'm really excited to have them all here. Um, we're gonna do things a little bit differently. We're gonna give them two minutes each to come up and tell you about themselves. And then we're gonna do a little bit of a lightning round. We're gonna stand them all up here. We're gonna give them the tech sector special, the whiteboard, and I'm gonna throw some questions at them and they're all gonna th show us their answers at the same time because we wanna see if they can operate on their toes a little bit. Um, because Jason and Alex are very savvy operators, after each one of them speaks, we're gonna take a picture of each of them together because they know that one of these people could be your next mayor and they wanna have some leverage when that happens. So we're gonna pause for a picture every time. That is smart, that is strategy, guys, okay? Pay attention. Um, we want this to be fair, and so instead of me deciding who speaks first, uh, apparently the tech TO had chat GBT do it. Uh, <laughs> I, I hope they asked it a nice, fair, neutral question. Um, but chat GBT uh, chose the order, so I'm gonna call them up one at a time to speak at the podium and they can introduce themselves. So first up in our lineup, we have Rob Davies. Can we hold up here? Okay, hold up. Well, thank you very much. So um, this is an analog moment, right? I've got my prop here. And people are like, who's the weirdo with the stolen street sign? Um, and I'm used to people um, calling me that because for a long time I, I faced discrimination. I was an Android user. But in all seriousness, um, this morning when I launched uh, my campaign for mayor of Toronto, I had this prop. And um, city council uh, a year and a half ago voted to change the name of this street at a cost of $6 million and possibly 59 others at a cost of $21 million. And I thought to myself, I care more about the person who might be homeless sleeping under this sign than I do about the words written on this sign. And so for me, and the reason I'm running is because I think this is a measure of misguided priorities and a bit of wasteful spending. And, and I know that council, the council, I know many of them, and some of them are even like me. Um, they are well-intentioned, but it doesn't preclude them from making mistakes, and I think this was a mistake. So I'm running because 
I think this is money that should be dedicated to things that are a priority, making our subway safe, caring for homeless, making sure that we provide services to seniors. And um, I've been saying for the last few weeks that I want to make the city safer, cleaner, and kinder. You know, one of my uh, competitors got into a lot of trouble because he was advocating for homeless people who were evicted from uh, an encampment. And um, I kind of think he was right to be criticizing city, the city of Toronto because we need to be kinder. If we don't take care of people who are homeless, they're going to be on your subway and they're going to be in libraries and they're in crisis. So we can't have a safer city unless we have a kinder city. So yes, you can take a picture. I'm going to drop the mic. No, I'm not going to drop the mic. I'm just kidding. I'm going to hand you the mic. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to make sure that you guys have uh, the websites for all these candidates. So if you have more questions, you want to find out more, you can Google them after the event, find out more about what they're all about. Okay, thank you. Next in our lineup, and I'm going to get you guys to run city council because you are tight on time and I like it. Uh, next in our lineup is Gail Penalosa. Thank you. I heard people were asking that you need people, you need talent. As mayor, that is gonna be my top priority. How to retain and how to attract the best people. I mean, we're gonna grow by over 50% the of population in the GTHA, but are we gonna get the cream of the crop or are we gonna get the leftovers? And Toronto is not working. In the last campaign, I walked every ward, almost every neighborhood. And in 100 days, I got 100,000 votes. And people were saying, Toronto's good, but not for me. The young people said it's good for the older. The downtown is good for the suburbs. Everybody said it's good, but for someone else. That's why I think Toronto should be good for everyone. That is my call of action. Toronto for everyone. Affordable, beautiful, and fun. I think that when I said affordable, it's about housing. We have failed horribly in the last 10 years or more on housing, horribly. Mobility, same thing. Uh, on social services, it's very clear. So that is affordable. When I'm saying beautiful, the streets, we gotta get the streets clean. We got contracts on the garbage, they don't work and we don't cancel those contracts. And when I say fun, we need a city that is fun. Four seasons. The libraries have to be open on seven days a week. We got to have the parks with full of activities. We got to have festivals, winter festivals, summer festivals, everything, because we are competing. We are competing against how to attract the people. Canada is going to have about 500,000 people every year. We're competing with Montreal and Vancouver and Calgary and Edmonton, but we're also competing against New York and Copenhagen and Melbourne and Paris and the world. And we can compete, but in order to compete, we got to have a Toronto that is good for everyone. That's why I invite you to help out in the process because we got to do it together. We need to do, we have failed horribly in the last 10 or 12 years. We got to do things radically different, but we can do it. This is not so much a technical issue. It's not so much a financial, it's a political one. So let's create a Toronto for everyone that is affordable, that is beautiful, and also that is fun. Thank you. All right, leverage picture about to be taken. And as they're doing that, I'm going to uh, call up our next speaker, Mitzi Hunter. Thank you, Siri, and good evening. This is um, quite the experience here. Um, you know, I started off uh, in tech, and it was a long time ago. I was the president of a technology incubator called Smart Toronto, um, the sister organization to Communitech. And, um, you know, I spent my time advocating for startups and um, new media companies. 
um, bringing them together with large uh, uh, information communications technology companies. And I remember I was walking um, near Queen's Park and I met the minister um, responsible for overseeing the sector. And I remember telling him how excited I was about Mars Discovery District and the fact that he needed to fund that space for Toronto. And I, rem I remember he said to me, he said, Mitzi, thank you for telling me that because we're just about to make a decision about what to do. And if I don't hear from people like you, I might make the wrong decision. And um, I think it's safe to say he made the right decision. Because when you think about the research and the innovation happening on University Corridor, the Mars Center is really critical to that. And, um, you know, I'm running to be the mayor of our city because I want a city where young people, people of all backgrounds, can live in our city, work in our city, play in our city. And right now, there's a question mark if that's going to be possible. And I don't want that to be Toronto's reality because we are one of the greatest cities in the world and what makes us great are all of you. It's the people. And so for me, I know Siri is coming here. For me, I want this to continue to be a city of possibilities where you can just be walking down the street, collide with a cabinet minister and change our city. Thank you. Thanks, Mitzi. Honestly, I think every political event should be run like this. Tight, it's great. Okay, next to the podium is Brad Bradford. Thanks very much, Siri. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brad Bradford. I'm running for mayor, and it is a huge honor to be here with the TechTO crowd tonight. Uh, Alex, Jason, thanks for bringing us all together, and thank all of you for showing up. Um, how did I get into city politics? Well, I'm an urban planner by training. Uh, I actually used to work in the chief planner's office at City Hall. And I spent a few years there and uh, found myself kind of frustrated with the endless debate, the delay, the deferral, the lack of decisions, and the lack of moving things forward. And you know, I'm a 1986 model. Uh, that makes me 36. And so when we talk about housing, when we talk about affordability, when we talk about getting around the city, those issues really resonate with me. That frustration resonates me. I'm living it. I understand those challenges. And I think too often, we have a city council that's actually very disconnected from that. I had a conversation with Valerie. Valerie from Calgary just moved here. Where's Valerie? Yeah, right there in the back. Thanks for coming out. Let's welcome Valerie from Alberta. Made the journey here to Toronto. Love it. But she said to me, you know what, Brad? I'm actually thinking about moving back. Uh, because it's hard to afford to live here. And for too often, you've had councillors, you've had elected officials who have made a career about saying no, saying no to housing. Folks who are far too willing to bend the knee to allow vocal minority of folks who don't want you to live in their neighborhood. My journey and my time in office, I've been pushing back on that. And I, un I understand that the tech sector, whether you are a founder or a funder, there have been some challenging times, but it's a resilient community. It's a community based and built on resilience. And the promise that if you want to come to Toronto, we want to have you. It is a competition for talent, for time, and for treasure. And if we want this city to grow, and the tech sector is a huge part of that, if we want to continue to have prosperity in this city, we need to make sure that you have a place to live here. So that's more infrastructure, that's more housing, as someone who's actually dedicated to taking action to getting this city moving. That's why I'm running for mayor. Less talk, more action. Let's get it done together. Thanks, guys. Got a tagline. All right. While Brad's taking his picture, I am going to call to the stage Josh Matlow. Oh, so nimble. So nimble. So nimble. Thank you, Siri. 
Well, hi, everyone. I'm Josh Matlow. And uh, this morning, uh, I went and actually started a, a little startup of my own, which is my mayoral campaign. Um, so, uh, by the way, votematlow.ca. I took a cue from some of you. And um, I mean, I, I really believe that we can create a far better city, a city that uh, supports those who are most vulnerable, a city that actually addresses our problems. But we can't do it if we don't become intentional about our investments. Investments into people who are living in our streets and in our parks, into the root causes of violence rather than just reacting, into ensuring that we can attract people to our city to work and live here, along with supporting those who live here today, by addressing the fact that rent and mortgages are through the roof, our transit system is not safe, our roads are crumbling, our services are declining, and for far too long, we've been pretending that everything is fine. But I think that all of us know that we can do better. And my job as mayor will be to work with each of you to make sure that your ideas come to City Hall and we make a difference that actually matters to people. You know, how can we compete, for example, even in the tech sector in particular, with cities like Austin or Miami or places in California if our quality of life continues to decline? How do we compete? How do we retain talent? How do we attract talent if people don't want to live in our city? If it's hard, for example, if you're a young parent to get your kid into a rec program, if you're a young person who cannot afford to live in this city, and if the services that you rely on every day are not there when you need them. So my focus will be to work with you to make sure that not only do we support the tech sector, that we support our economy, but also we make sure that those who have been left behind, who have been left out of that dream, finally have a place. Anyway, I just want to conclude by thanking you very much for inviting me. Thank you to Robin. Thank you to TechTO. And I look forward to seeing you all. And by the way, tech at its best is when you connect people. And I just noticed that a lot of you are here not just to listen to us talk with you, but to also connect with each other. And it really is a pleasure to connect with you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. OK. Before we do our lightning round, we have one final speaker. I'm very excited to welcome Chloe Brown. Oh, <laughs> photobomb it. Do it. Good evening, everybody. I'm so happy to be here because, as you can imagine, I am too tired of the political rhetoric, and I just want to get straight into the issues. One of city councils, Queen Parks, and Parliament's biggest problem is that they don't invest in IP, UX, UI, and they don't really understand the difference between technology, softwares, and hardwares. And we see this from the time that I had a clip-on pager with BlackBerry through my mom to now where we have smartphones and there has been little to no investment in the intellectual property that people produce. Intellectual property is a human resource and we do not treat it the same way that we treat natural resources that come out of the ground or, or even the relationships that we have. We don't invest in them. And we see this across the city with a lack of digital literacy across generations. If the city was really serious about creating these solutions in housing and transit, they would look at their own data and actually give you the money to create user-friendly platforms and applications that get into the hands of residents. They would actually be setting up user testing for you across neighborhoods. They have the ability to do this, they have the money to do this, but they don't understand what tech is. And that is very clear from being a kid that has grown up in this city and watched tons of entrepreneurs leave, tons of artists leave, because the city loves to talk a big game, but they can't, they can't pay for it. And this is why, as a young person, I'm running, because I work at the Future Skills Center, and I had a portfolio of 26 projects across Canada who worked through the pandemic to deliver digital solutions. What that looked like was digital micro factories, which is one of my favorite products that I would love to bring to Toronto to relocalize supply chains. Now more than ever, manufacturing has been shrunk. You can shrink it. And there's this opportunity to relax zoning so that manufacturers, makerspaces, 3D printing, and all the tools that we can need 
are closer to home. There's, sorry, but yeah, um, I just want to close by saying that there is this opportunity here to spread the wealth from downtown to North York, Scarborough, and Etobicoke, and make sure that there's science, technology, engineering, arts, and math for everyone, not just an exclusive few. Thank you. Great job. Okay, let's hear it for all the candidates. That's a hard thing to do. We're going to do one more picture, and then we're going to bring people up for the lightning round. I encourage all of you to ask more questions for the candidates. Obviously, there's a lot to cover. There's a lot of thinking here. This is a big decision. Reach out. Get involved. Uh, I used to work for a mayor, um, and we had a meeting with a bunch of VCs from San Francisco probably like 12 years ago. And they said to me, Toronto has an opportunity to avoid the mistakes that San Francisco has made, but you need to do it now. We are already behind. There is a lot of work to do. This is an important decision. So I encourage you all to learn more about these candidates and the other people who are running. Okay, now we're going to wing it a bit, guys. Are you ready? If you could all join me on the stage in any order, it doesn't matter. We're going to give you a whiteboard. And we're going to do some lightning round questions. Pop up there, guys. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to ask a question. It's kind of going to be like Jeopardy a little bit. I'm going to ask a question. You're all going to write down your answers. And then I'm going to say go, and you're all going to reveal them to the crowd. It's going to be so exciting. And also, we're going to create some content for social media, because I know that's very important to Jason. So I try and do my best to create those moments for him. Are we all ready? You will be judged on penmanship. <laughs> you won't at all. OK. Write down your number one priority as mayor. Can't be more than like five words. Oh, yeah, sing it. Na, 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 na. Na 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 You done, Josh? No. All right. One, two, three. All right. Gil Penalosa, equity. Brad Bradford, more housing. Mitzi Hunter, safety. Chloe, community land and data trusts. Uh, Josh, affordability. And Rob, safety on the TTC. Okay. Erase your boards. Do we have a uh, Kleenex or anything that they can erase? Oh, you can do it. Okay, let me, I'm just making these up as we go along. What is, I'll grab that for you. What is the app on your phone that you use the most? <laughs> or, you know, what's your favorite channel on TV? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody ready? Go. Twitter, Spotify for Brad, Twitter for Mitzi, Reddit. Big Reddit crowd in Toronto. Waze and Twitter, but my team wants to take it away from me, and rightly so, Josh. All right. Um, in one word, Describe your leadership approach. I'm going to pick one of you to do one of these. Get ready. Okay, are we ready? One word. Josh, it's one word. I see you writing a lot. All right, hold them up. That's two words, Gil. Listen and do. Strong, unifier, coordinated, determined. Fearless. All right. <laughs> if you could run one technology or private sector company, what company would it be? <laughs> what? technology or like private sector company would you run if you could run any of them oh girl surprise me <laughs> if you say the starship enterprise oh my god <laughs> are we ready <laughs> oh 
Okay, go. Rob, Shopify, Wealth Simple, interesting times, Stark Industries, <laughs> Nix, Nix is a good one, Borrow Well, Well Being. All right, that was fun. What is the most important thing to think about when you're hiring? If you're hiring your team at the City of Toronto, what are you going to be looking for, the people you assemble around you? <laughs> you guys look so cute right now. Okay, ready? One, two, three. You're looking for doers? I'm going to let you guys explain this a little bit. Really fast. Well, because nothing is happening. We need people that find solutions to problems because too many people are finding problems to solutions. I got a lot of problems. Giving us the mic. Uh, curiosity. You want people who care? You have to be curious if you care. Talent, skills, bring them all together. They're all different. That's a team. A uh, willingness to upskill or cross-train means that you're open to accepting that maybe your solution might not be the one, but someone might, else might have it, so you can stack your solutions on top of each other for a whole change. Do we have the right ingredients to get results for the people we serve? C word, character. Most important thing in leadership is character. How do people make decisions? How do they consider the impacts of those decisions? Are they considerate? Are they honest? And are they gonna work from nine to five and not you know, go off for long lunches? Or are they the other C word? Two more, I got two more. All right. What is your predominant means of traveling around the city? Do you drive? Do you ride a bike? Do you walk? Do you take the bus? Do you ride one of these stupid things that Jason rides? I've never seen you on that in the street, actually. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. He set your house on fire. Okay, ready? Let's see. Walk and bike, bike, drive from Scarborough. There's no other way. Trails and TTC, thank you for reading that. Walking, TTC and car. Okay, and our final question. Can you write down the URL for your campaign website, please? And or any handles you want this crowd to know. Yeah, draw a little picture. <laughs> While they're doing that, I want to thank this crowd, and I want you all to thank all of you for being interested. This is so important. I know it seems off topic sometimes with tech, but it is not. This is an important moment in our city, and I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope you learned something, and I hope you will learn more. So while they do this, let's give a big round of applause to everybody. Hold them up. <laughs> oh, this is a long URL. <laughs> RobDavis.ca, VoteMatlow.ca, Chloe Brown, number four TO, MitziForMayor.ca, BradBradford.ca, GilForMayor.ca. Check them out and more. Thank you guys. Have a great night.